Santo Rosa, Santo Sing it one more time. The Bible says the name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous runs into it. The name of God is not just pronounced. It's an address. It's a place of refuge. It's a place of safety. It's a place where you draw strength from. Can you lift your voice in two minutes? I don't know why you came this afternoon. But I want you in two minutes to just cry to God and say, Lord, I am here and I'm in your presence. Visit me. Some of you have come to renew strength. Some of you are discouraged. You have come to be comforted. Some of you are weak. You have come to be made strong. Some are bound and need deliverance. For upon Mount Zion there shall be deliverance. And the house of Jacob will possess her possession. Two minutes, lift your voice and cry to him. Lift your voice and cry to him. Open your mouth and cry to him. Visit your people again. Let the fresh fountain of life flow from your throne. Strengthen your people again upon Mount Zion. Bring deliverance to the bound. Bring healing to the afflicted. Strength to the weary. For they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not fail. So bakata bala kate kabaske parugia. Zebele ko sopra tababara. Moshe ke paruza talabakai. Meshapra hata kabrene. Eskopra te membrosko pronosi labara.
We trust you, Lord. We trust you, Lord. Hey, hey, hey. You are true, Lord. And your promises, and your promises. We trust you, Lord. 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 So we trust you, Lord. We trust you, Lord. We trust you, Lord. Hey. hey, you are king, and you reign forevermore. Reign in my life, reign in my life. You are king of the soul, and you reign forevermore. Ask it to rain in your life. You are king of the soul. And you reign. And you reign forevermore. Rain in my life. Rain in my life. Rain in my life. Rain, rain, Jesus. Rain in my life. Have carried 
for in the sanctuary God oh come lay down all the burdens and pains you have carried all the frustration and discouragement lay down in his presence Oh, come lay down, oh, come lay down, all the body you have carried, but in the sanctuary, God is here, come and lay down, come, come lay down, all the burning. God is here, God. God is here. Come on, oh God. God. All the burden. God is here. Oh, God. in the sanctuary. God is here. God is here. Oh, come with God. At his feet and praise his presence. God is in God. Come and lay down. The burdens you have carried for in the sanctuary. God is in. Sanctuary, one more time. Oh, come lay down. One more time, raise it up. Oh, come lay down. Enjoy his presence tonight. My God is here. Oh, come lay. in the sanctuary. One more time. Oh, come lay down. Every burden that you came with, every trouble in your mind, in your bodies, every weight laid at his feet tonight. Oh, come lay down, come lay down. Just pray in the spirit where you are. Just pray in the spirit. His presence is in this place. Open your mouth. Pray out loud in the spirit. So do Baraha. Don't let another person do it for you. Enjoy his presence. Shobraha Tama. I can't hear you. Soboraha Kamaya. And how great is our God. Sing with me. How great is our God. And all we 
would sing how great is our God. Just the voices. How great is our God. How great is our God. Sing with me. Mele Mahasi Abagama Sharikete Brahanda Krate Merokoma. How great is our God? Sing it one more time. How great is our God? Come on, raise your voice and oh, 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 And my heart will sing, my heart will sing. Open up your mouth, sing it to him, to the most high God, to the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, maker of the universe, master of the whole earth. Sing with me. Is that I hear you sing it to me. Oh, we sing. Even babies, for out of the mouth of babes and sucklings, thou hast ordained praise, thou hast ordained strength. One more time. Say, how great, how great. Lift your hands to him. Oh, 
Come on, give the Lord the biggest hand and clap, clap to Jesus. I said, clap to Him and shout with a voice of triumph. Hallelujah. Glory to Jesus. Hallelujah. You see, worship is dynamic. The Bible says, sing to the Lord a new song. Are you hearing me? It must not be completely a new song, but sometimes a different way of singing the same thing. Worship is dynamic. It's never static. That's how to enjoy intimacy with God. Be dynamic in your worship. Huh? How many of you believe that God, that you serve is great and greatly to be praised? Wave your hands. To him and give him praise. Wave your hands to Jesus. Daily as I live and often as I breathe, let my whole life be expressions of your grace. Sing it to him. Daily as I live. And love as I breathe For Just the voices we cry of a father We cry of a father Hallowed be your name Cry to him tonight Hallowed be your name Come on, do it again. We cry of a father. I can't hear you. Raise your voice and declare to me. Hallow be your name. Hallow be your name. We cry. Say hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Oh, but get up, yaya. Somebody just press in his presence. Hallelujah. Just the drums, just the drums. We cry of a father. Hallow be your name. be your name. Hallow be We cry of a father. Hey, Ababa Shate Kababa Yaka. Hallow be Hallelujah! 
Just keep playing the same progression. We cry out of Father. Hallowed be. Hallowed be your name. Hallowed be. Open your mouth and pray in the spirit. Open your mouth and pray in the spirit where you are. Let's press for the next five minutes. For the next five minutes, just pray in tongues where you are. Sobarata balakama reto koma siakama. Shobro koto moske bebra hata babreske bobo koto bosia. Siba balakata balaka berana masia bahada. Eve krata baraga basika brana lamana. Hey, na 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 na, hey, na na na, shama de na ma na 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 na. So kubora da basiama. Open your mouth and pray in other tongues. Out of your belly shall flow rivers of living water. Let it flow, let it flow, let it flow, let it flow. So brata mareko te mamu kasina. Fika la kabaria kato skuto brondo shie. Iro kobo soto rogo bobo rodi yamaha. Sigere bo koto robo koshi akanda pranta malai. Don't stop, don't stop, don't stop, don't stop, don't stop. Open your mouth and pray in the language of the spirit. I remember the place where you brought me from. Lord, I thank you for where I am today. Just keep pressing in the spirit. I see you doing a new thing in my life. Lord, I thank you for the future. I see Lord, I thank you for the future. Come on, keep praying in the spirit. Somebody, you need to press some more. You need to press some more. Edify yourself as you pray. Revive your spirit man as you pray. Okay, 
Kotiyama. Jeke Paradiata. Sobro Kotobra and the Brahmis. Somebody who needs a breakthrough. Press. 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 For three more minutes. Malakate Kabalas. Let that resistance that is before you give way. Let that obstacle that is before you be broken. Break through every discouragement. Break through every depression. This is your season. This is your time. This is your hour for a lifting, for a change, for transformation, for lifting. Open your mouth and press. I feel somebody hitting a breakthrough. I feel somebody hitting a breakthrough. So protoko borogo Embrakos kete brada tabala kate falate balusha falabara de bas go ahead and press 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 oh sekela barada Lord I thank you for the future I see. Come on, come on. Don't stop. Hit that breakthrough in the spirit. Lord, I thank you for the future I see. Lord, I thank you for the future I see. Lord, I thank you for the future I see. Lord, I thank you for the future I see. Shabbatakabarababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababab
That's how you are built up. That's how you are changed. It's not just up to God. Draw strength from the Spirit of God. Draw strength in His presence. For the future, I see. For the future, For the on Christ the solid rock I stand all other ground is sinking sand all other ground is thank you Jesus koro boko sipra te paraka kosha kapala katapala fala barata pakato posute prekete ekato kariate some of you are touching fresh mantles fresh anointings in the spirit something is opening up over your life opening up over your space soprata parakate barusia ba fela paragata la barate bosso protoko protoko sia si kala barada basi protoko prosia so protoko proto si prahata kapa shapara kata balade so proto la kata baragada ba he barushi kete barudi aba thank you lord on Christ the solid rock I stand all of the ground is sinking sand. Shoba bakatakaya. All of the ground is sinking sand. Puteke na bahasiaka. On Christ the solid rock I stand. All of the ground. Is sinking sand. It's not a waste of time. You increase as you pray. You rise higher as you pray. You grow as you pray. You contact grace as you pray. You multiply in strength as you pray. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Shabarakato Koporokoto. Press some more, press some more, press some more. Shabarata Parate Kotopo. Ebro Sopato Koposi Prata Paraka. Prata Paragata. Shabarakata Paragata. Ekato Kopasiata. Mekele Berosi. So broke to the Mosian. It is a great revolution. A papa, 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 a
for even the young shall be weary and the weak shall be weary the youth shall be weary and the young men shall utterly fail but they that wait on the Lord shall renew their strength they shall mount up with wings as eagles they shall run and not be weary they shall walk and not faint holy spirit thou art welcome in this place just keep praying just keep praying holy spirit thou art welcome in this place omnipotent father of mercy and grace thou art welcome in this place thank you father in jesus hallelujah Tonight is going to be a night of encounter. Amen. You will contact something fresh from above. There's going to be a change in your life today. In the name of Jesus Christ. Are you ready tonight? Please take your seat in the presence of the Lord. Shubarataba. Amen. Hallowed be your name. Hallowed be your name. Hallowed be your name. Majesty, divine authority, hallowed be your name. Hallelujah. Now, I'd like you to know something. God is training us in this place. Are we together? What you are receiving here is deep spiritual training. It may not, you may not see what is becoming of you, yes. But just give yourself time and be consistent. There is a pattern with which God makes men. There is a pattern for greatness. So every time we gather here, we fellowship in the word and in the spirit. It is God's strategy. To ensure that we are built up, that we grow, that we are trained. There's more that God wants to do with you, but not with this version of you. And so God is committed to ensuring that you grow, that you are trained, that you stretch beyond your capacity. Are you hearing what I'm saying? You know, just before coming here, I was thinking about something. And this came to me like a thought. And I, I believe it was inspired by God. I don't know why I can't hear myself here. The, the sound is okay, but I think I need volumes here. Do you know that 
the amount of positive change and transformation that you find at work in your life is relative to how to the value you place on the ministry of the word of God let me say it again for those of us who didn't get it the first time the amount of positive change and transformation and impact that is manifested through your life is relative to the value that you place on the word of God. Any man that doesn't desire the ministry of the word of God does not want to sign up for change, does not want to grow, does not want to be transformed. There is more that God can do with you when you are transformed to a more improved and a higher version of this. Are you hearing what I'm saying? And so you must value the ministry of the word again and again. You must like it if you must grow. There are levels of possibilities you will not see until you go deeper in the word. And that's the reason why if you truly want to walk with God and experience his power and experience his grace in your life, you have to make a vow that you will not live a nominal kind of Christian life. You have to step away, step ahead of your generation. Go beyond the terrain and press into God. Last day I preached a message pressing into God. It's important that you get that message. When we celebrate great men in the kingdom, what we are celebrating is simply the manifestation of prolonged impact of the ministry of the word and the spirit of God in the life of that person. And so if you want to be great, you must embrace and submit to the ministry of the word. You must never get tired of the training. No. Because God is growing us day by day. He's renewing our strength. He's causing us to be transformed more and more till we become like him. Till you manifest his power, his grace, his wisdom. Till you manifest authentic dominion. Till everything around your environment can tell that this one is a son of God. That's the, that's the state, that's, that's the process that takes a man from bringing a child of God to being a son of God. And so I'd like you to realize that what God is doing here is training. Amen? And you know, trainings are not supposed to be pleasant. How many of you have been to a military establishment before? If you enter a military base or a military establishment, it's like there's a different air there. In fact, without you being told, you just comport yourself. Because there are rules that you must follow there. If you enter a place where military personnel are being trained, I happen to stay somewhere, you know, where military personnel are. And one morning, the rain was falling. It was cold. My windows were locked. And I saw through the window, I saw some guys wearing black and black and they were jogging under the rain. I say, me, I can't do this one. Now, that is natural training because they are going to become combatant soldiers. The reason why they are trained harshly is because they will be exposed to harsher situations. And so, when you see God training you and not pitying you, it's because of what he has seen ahead. It's because of the weight of the destiny that has been placed on your life. That's why God will not pity you. That's why every Sunday we keep coming here, being trained, growing day by day in the school of the spirit. Waxing stronger and stronger till we become masters and giants in the things of God. That's what you should become. At a time will come where you will not need to cry and look for a man of God. No, that you have attained mastery in some things. That you too can command salvation unto Jacob. You too can become a savior. The Bible says, saviors, not men of God. Saviors shall arise from Mount Zion. And this is Mount Zion. Amen. So I'd like you to really embrace what God is doing in this place. Take it very seriously and love the ministry of the word of God. Place value on it. Because it will change you to become as it has said. Are we ready for the word tonight? All right. I'm going to teach briefly. 
I don't want to waste too much time because I want us to pray. We're going to pray for like 15 to 20 minutes. Amen? <laughs> this is a praying service. Amen and amen. And God bless everyone that is following online. Can we celebrate those who are following by way of the internet? Amen and amen. I know that you are part and parcel of this service or whatever God is doing here today. Amen? So this is going to be, we are going to take time to pray. I'm going to help, by the help of the Holy Spirit, I'm going to stretch us today. Amen? Nobody is more tired than I am. Abby, there's nobody here. I'm talking about those of us in the hall. None of you are as tired as I am. Are you hearing what I'm saying? I just landed Meduguri. Okay? Uh -huh. So, we'll all do it together. Amen? Let me tell you something about the flesh. Your body, when your body tells you it's tired, it's not true. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Uh -huh. I had a very busy week. You can't imagine. Yesterday, I had meetings upon meetings. I ate my first food a few minutes to 9 p.m. Amen? And the night was shared into two. You understand what I mean? Uh, so, me, I should be more tired. And I just flew into town. I should be resting, Abby. So when I saw spraying, I saw some people sit there just and say, ah, imagine if your destiny was to depend on what you are doing. That's the reason why not many people are great in the kingdom. Not because God is partial, but because some people have decided to just remain lazy. They have decided to pamper their destiny. And anything that you pamper will become spoiled. Amen. But everything that you persecute will become tough. Everything that you chastise, that you enforce with a lot of strength, will be, it will grow. Some of you, if you have an idea of what God is going to do with your life, if you have an idea of where God is sending you to, you don't even have an idea. That's why you are here. As you receive the teachings of the word and your spiritual senses are open, you will begin to see where God is sending you to. And maybe that's when you begin to take your walk with God very seriously. Are you hearing what I'm saying? The Bible says Elijah slept under the juniper tree and an angel appeared to him and woke him up and said, eat. He ate the bread that was kept there and slept off again. The angel appeared and said, oh guys, it's not time to sleep. Eat for the journey is far. Eat and continue the journey. And the Bible says, thank God he ate twice. The Bible says he went on the strength of that meat 40 days. I'm sure when he got to the 12th day, he would have said, if I had known, I would have asked for third ration and keep inside bag. So, this, what you are receiving now is the bread that will sustain you in the days ahead. Many Christians are depressed and discouraged by little things. You know why? They have not developed capacity. They didn't eat enough. They were not stretched. They, they were not trained. They were not trained to withstand hardness. Let me tell you the truth. If you must become great in the kingdom, there is an element of hardness to your training, whether you like it or not. And northern Nigeria, Christians in northern Nigeria, we either wake up or we remain the way we are. You know, well, I will talk about that in my message. But we are, after we finish this teaching today, we are going to stretch. In fact, 30 minutes. We are going to pray for 30 good minutes. I will stretch you. Say amen to that. Ushers, stand by the, in fact, protocols, because ushers will smile. Nobody will leave. You will pray today. Amen. The breakthrough that you hit is for your good. It's not for me. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Uh-huh. But are you ready tonight? I want to teach today. We've, we, we've been on a series of spirituality. I think I can do without this fan. Please. We've been on a series of spirituality and I want you to take note of what God is doing. Every time teachings come, listen, prophecy is not only thus said the Lord or so-so person in your family, no. The Bible calls the word of God a more sure word of prophecy. Sometimes when I teach like this, it may apply to something that you are going through or a question you had in your heart within the week. And then God provides the answer by giving me a teaching to bring, excuse me, by the word of God. So this season that we've been on talking about spiritual matters, it is because God wants to pay more attention to our spiritual growth. 
we've had other series. In fact, before miracle service of this month, I think before Youth of Flame, we, taught, we, we, we dealt on sexuality in relationships. So we've touched different aspects. But this period, God is concentrating on our spiritual life. Amen? And we started the first part of this series, uh, which we concluded last Sunday. Amen? And today we are going to go through another one. Last week, we talked about dealing with God as spirit. I will, I will encourage you to get that message, very powerful message that will open your understanding in dealing with God. Amen. Today, we are going to talk about become, becoming a spiritual heavyweight. Becoming a spiritual heavyweight. Becoming a spiritual heavyweight. How many of you like to watch wrestling? So you know that there's a title in wrestling they call World Heavyweight Champion. Is that true? Hmm. See how you know wrestling now, ba? If you can know the Bible half of the, half as much. Amen. Me too, I watch wrestling, but I, the wrestling is not before the Bible. Are you hearing me? Uh -huh. Before I watch wrestling, I've, I've taken care of my destiny first. So in wrestling and in boxing, fighters are divided or categorized based on their weight. Like in boxing, there is lightweight, there is mildewweight, there is welterweight, there is even bridger weight, then there is heavyweight. And so from around 2020, they now decided that a heavyweight boxer who should weigh at least 220 pounds. All right? That's about, I think, 100, 100 and something kg. So once you are 220 pounds and above, you are a heavyweight boxer. Amen. And the reason why they categorize it like that is so that you don't have somebody with a lighter weight fighting somebody with a heavyweight. Everybody fights in their category. So what will increase your ranking is going to be as you increase in weight and in stature. Now just the way we have heavyweights in the natural, and of course when we talk about heavyweights, figuratively now in the natural, you are talking about people with good body physique, people with weight, people with strength. Strength is the ability to exert force or to lift up a weight. People with stamina, endurance, they can keep an action for a prolonged period of time. How many of you have been to the gym before? I advise you to go to the gym. Amen? For some of you who are already, you are more than heavyweight now, you are, you are balloon weight. Find a gym and go there. Amen? Even if you have in your house, once in a while, go to the gym. Because the reason why you don't, even that one you have in your house, you will not be encouraged. But when you go to the gym and you see people walking out, you man, you will walk out. Amen? And you know, Nigerians are very funny people. After they finish walking out, they will go back and eat and replace the workout. Is that true? Restoration. That's not restoration. That's, that's a... Uh, Retrogression. Amen. For some of you that are slim like me, you can go exercise your muscles. Amen. I remember many years ago when we started the university, I was staying then at the College of Medical Science. So there was a gym at the back of the hostel. So I used to go there. And then one day I decided to try it out and it wasn't funny. Amen. So they, they kept it on me and said I should lift it. You know this one they do like this. Said I should go for 10 times. When I got to the seven, my hand was shaking. And then all of a sudden, my muscles began to pain me. And you know what the person who was instructing me told me? He said, when you begin to feel the pains, that's when your muscles begin to expand. So the gain, 
the profit in what you are doing is when you begin to feel pain. That's why they say no pain. So I think for that semester I was faithful. Then when I went to the university, amen. Don't be like me in Jesus' name. Becoming a spiritual heavyweight. Ephesians chapter 3 verse 16 to 19. Maybe I'll just read verse 16 now and then much later I'll read the rest. That he will grant you according to the riches of his glory to be strengthened with might through his spirit in the inner man. To be strengthened with might through his spirit in the inner man. So it talks about strength that comes from within you. Not just the strength of your muscles now. Or strength that comes from within your spirit. So just like you have strength in the natural, which is based on the capacity of your muscles, you also can have strength spiritually. There is even what they call mental strength. There are many people who emotionally are not heavyweights. They can't handle emotions. They can't handle discouragement. They can't handle situations that will cripple or try to attack their emotions. So you can develop physical strength, mental strength, and even spiritual strength. And Paul said that the spiritual strength comes from the Holy Spirit into your inner man. Your inner man is your spirit man. So this is not a strength that is physical. It is a strength that comes from within you. Now let's read on to verse 19. Let's see what this strength will help you to do. Just like when a man has strength in the natural, he can lift up weights. He can apply pressure. He can do work. So also when you have developed spiritual strength by the Spirit of God, the Bible says, let's read from verse 17 down. This is what the strength that comes from the Spirit of God will do to you. It says that Christ may dwell in your heart through faith. That you being rooted and grounded in love may be able to comprehend with all the saints what is the width and length and depth and height to know the love of Christ which passes knowledge. So this is a strength that equips you with spiritual knowledge or it equips you with the capacity to comprehend spiritual knowledge. The Bible says that you will be able to comprehend the dimensions of the revelations of Christ. When we talk about dimensions, and I want you to please pay attention before we pray today. Because so many things will open up for you today in the name of Jesus Christ. Now, when we talk about dimensions, we are simply talking about different planes or different sides to a thing. It's an engineering term. Maybe this seeing it from this way is a dimension or seeing it from this way is a dimension. So the Bible speaks of the revelation of the knowledge of Christ that we know it dimensionally. In other words, you can't capture the full spiritual knowledge of Christ at once. You will have to go step by step. The Bible says at some point you will know the height of spiritual knowledge. You will know the length you will know the breadth and you will know the depth. That means that as you know these things, you are growing in them. So you are not just growing in height, but you are also growing in depth. I wish I had time to explain growing in depth as a believer. The reason why many believers are deceived, especially with preachings, preachers or preachings or messages online, is because they don't have sufficient depth in the knowledge of God. Listen, if you want to raise a building, the first thing that is considered is the depth of the foundation. Most times, the depth of a, of a building is almost, sometimes, sometimes it is almost equal to the exact height of the building. You need to go where they build skyscrapers. You know skyscrapers? Okay. 
People watching online will know. Some of us who have, were born in Yerwa, that time Meduguri was not Meduguri, it was called Yerwa. Is it Yerwa? Eh? Eh? Yerwa. My goodness. Some of you, that was when you were born, Yerwa. You grew up and you attended Yerwa, Yerwa Primary School. Amen. Went to secondary school in Meduguri. Did your university here. So you've not gone anywhere. You will go somewhere. So skyscrapers are buildings that are very tall. I mean, if you go to places like Abuja, Lagos, or London, or, or New York, I think New York is one of the cities that has the greatest number of skyscrapers. Okay? Or even United Arab Emirates, Dubai. I think Dubai now is the, they are the ones competing. They keep building one, the tallest building, then the other one will pass. There's a building now going on in, in UAE. When it is completed, it will be taller than Burj Khalifa. How many of you know Burj Khalifa? God, you don't know. Burj Khalifa, you don't know. Amen. I'm just joking. I'm pulling your legs. Amen. All right. Burj Khalifa is the tallest building on earth now. It's a hotel. Amen. Plan your vacation and fly there one day and stand on the topmost floor. Amen. So those kind of buildings, you need to see when they are excavating the earth to put the foundations. The foundations can go so down. In fact, they can spend months or even years still working on the foundation. Because it's the foundation that will determine the height. There are many Christians that want to rise and be champions for God. But they are not ready for God to discipline them and give them depth in knowledge. Talk about basic doctrines of Christianity they don't know. In fact, the word doctrine is even strange to them. And so they become very shallow in the knowledge of Christ. And you see, knowledge is what gives birth to competence. And competence is what boosts your confidence. So I can tell how much faith you have by the amount of spiritual knowledge that you have accumulated. And so for you to become a heavyweight spiritually, the Bible says the Holy Ghost will supply you with strength. That strength will give you the ability to comprehend spiritual knowledge, dimensions of the knowledge of Christ beyond what is taught in church. I'm not just talking about knowledge that is mental. I'm talking about knowledge that will launch you into spiritual experiences. Launch you into certain things that become possible. Listen, as you grow in spiritual knowledge, your prayer point will be reducing. Because you will understand the laws in the spirit that make for the manifestation of certain possibilities. For instance, lack will no longer be a problem because you have the knowledge of the truth of God's word. That my God shall supply all your needs according to his riches in glory. So you understand that when the Bible speaks about glory, it's, it's more than just the image of God. The glory is the economy of the saints. And in that spiritual economy, there is so much that can be, so much supply in needs that can be converted to meet the need of the believer. So you can never be stranded anywhere. You can never lack anything, whether financial resources, material resources, human resources, or even spiritual resources. Because many people think their problem is money. Let me tell you the truth. Eh? In fact, when you get money, you will know that it's even a problem to have money. It's better not to have than to have money. Because there are some work, there's some kind of work you will need to do. You don't need financial resources. If you have money and there is generational cost in the family, can your money solve it? At that time, you need spiritual resources. You need a knowledge that can counter a law. A lady sent me a long email. As I was reading the email, I could just discern the problem. I had this dream. I had that dream. Uh, I said, the problem here is her mind is not renewed. That's the reason why the devil will keep tormenting you. The devil will use certain patterns to keep tormenting you again and again. You know why? Because he knows 
that the knowledge you have is not enough to combat what he's bringing against you. So you have been pegged in your ignorance. That's why every time you dream and see yourself in your primary school, you actually will experience retrogression because what you know about that pattern is that if I see myself in my primary school, it means retrogression. Do you know something that counters that pattern and once and for all checks the devil out of your life? Becoming a spiritual heavyweight. Tell your neighbor you must become a spiritual heavyweight. You see the way they are laughing. Tell them again to their face you must become. Mm -hmm. Fear anyhow about anything. Chicken hearted. That's a lightweight in the spirit. That kind of person cannot do much both for God and for himself. That kind of person will be a dependent continually. He's a baby in the spirit. He's 55 years old, but in the spirit he's a baby. They are still feeding him with milk because he needs people to do things for him. But the Bible says in Daniel 11:32 that they that do know their God shall be strong and then they will do the exploit. God did not save us to, 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 raise, to, to become consistently dependent on him. God did not save you to become a beggar. He saved you. The Bible says, you are my battle axe and my weapon of war. In another scripture, Ephesians 2 verse 10, it says, for we are his workmanship. The word workmanship means devices. We are his devices created in Christ Jesus for good works. I don't know, but when I talk about devices, at least think about phones and, and, and tablets and all of these things. The reason why they keep bringing out new kinds of phones and tablets is because of the capacity of that device. Those days we were used to having big phones but small capacity. Now you find a very slim phone but the power. You see a phone with how many gig? What do they call that thing? Is it RAM or ROM? RAM. How long? 64, right? 16. 64. Huh? Uh huh. 16 RAM, 512 ROM. There are some that even have one terabyte as ROM. So you see, it's small like that, but it has capacity. You keep saving and saving. Even you, your brain, you have forgotten what you said last year. But the device still has what you captured four years ago. So the Bible says, when the Holy Spirit supplies us this strength, it gives us the ability. To comprehend knowledge. That knowledge is the knowledge of Christ. Is the knowledge of the love of God that passes knowledge. And the Bible says you will be full. You will be filled with the fullness of God. Ephesians chapter 6 verse 10. Ephesians chapter 6 verse 10. Finally my brethren. Be strong in the Lord. And in the. Of his. Finally, my brethren, be what? Did he say act as if you are strong? Did he say pretend that you are strong? Did he say talk like you are strong? He said what? Be strong. Be strong. Tell your neighbor, be strong. Tell the other one, be strong. Be strong in the Lord. In other words, it's strength that comes from your union, your communion, your fellowship with God. There's something about God that you know that increases your strength. I'm not just talking about physical strength. I'm talking about spiritual and mental strength. And in the power of his might. Doctors will tell you that there are three daily habits that you need for a healthy living. If you want to live healthy, there are three basic habits that you must practice, make a part of your life every day. Number one, rest. Number two, exercise. Number three, diet. If you rest appropriately, if you exercise often, and if you have a good diet, you will live as healthy as possible. By the grace of God, God has brought me to a point where I hardly fall sick. 
As a matter of fact, I don't know when last I was injected for malaria or typhoid. How many of you have taken injection for malaria or typhoid? Or drugs? Say the truth and raise your hand. God bless you. You are still born again. You are still filled with the Holy Ghost. Okay? And if you have malaria in your body, go and take treatment. Don't go back home and say, Apostle, say you must be a heavyweight. Heavyweight. When the thing hook you under blanket. Amen. And you will be a heavyweight, but for now you are lightweight, so go on. And can I tell you something? It is also an action of faith when you take drugs after praying. It's not part of my message, but it's an action. Faith is action. It's, action. it's an action word. Are you hearing me? Faith will culminate in an action. Who told you that faith is only when you pray, you don't do any other thing? That's the reason why you don't get any result. Sometimes the result is a combination of actions. Pray and take drugs until you grow to the time when your faith can handle it. But for now, pray and take drugs. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Take it faithfully. It's faith because you don't know who produced that drug. You don't even know whether it's fake. So it's not even in the drug that you believe in. It's in God. Doctors will tell you that we cure, but God heals. Amen? So please, take drugs. Some of us is our disobedience. That's why you crash when people need you the most. Imagine if one Sunday you come here and it's not that I travel though. I'm in town and they tell you I'm not fine. That's why I have to stay at home. Imagine. Have you ever thought about it? No, you don't think about it. Your own is, you are thinking of that line. You are, some of you even sat there so that after service you will just remain there. You don't, you don't even think how is this guy surviving? How does he manage your own is apostle just attend to me so that I can go? All right, so rest, exercise, and diet. These are daily habits for a healthy living. And if you live healthy, you can grow to become a spiritual heavyweight. Hallelujah. So we are talking about strength today. We are talking about stamina we are talking about capacity when we talk about being a spiritual heavyweight we are talking about how much strength from God flows in you and through you how much spiritual stamina you have it will be tested in the midst of crisis marital crisis let me say it again marital crisis Yes. Relationship crisis. I don't know. We need to pray for the young people of these days. The way relationships are breaking like this. I'm not sure those kind of people can even sustain marriage for one month. This one, you have not seen the lady when she's not putting on pancake. You are already breaking up. What of when you see her without pancake and all the pimples and then she, she greets you good morning and a smell comes out of her mouth. Wow. Run where? Remain there. Remain there. For better for... You know, some ladies now, their problem is that why did I use ladies as an example? Okay, okay. And when you wake up in the morning and you see the guy with his face squeezed like this. Or you live inside the same house with him and you are the one that cooks, wash, everything. He doesn't do anything. You say, ah, is this the kind of husband I'm married? Yes, it's the kind of husband you married. Just that you were faking yourself in relationship. Amen. So, how much substance, how much strength, how much stamina you have, it will be tested in the midst of crisis. Marital crisis, academic crisis, financial crisis, all kinds of crisis. That's when we'll know whether you are a heavyweight spiritually. You remember the parable that Jesus gave about the wise man that built his house on a rock. And because he built on sure foundations, the Bible says the storm came. The wind blew over the house and the rain beat that house. But the Bible says it did not fall because it was founded on a rock. And then it spoke about the man that built his house on the stand. And the Bible says the wind blew on the house the storm beat on it and the rain fell on it. And the house became like the houses of some people during the flood. Amen. 
You know, after this flood in Beduguri, that's when we know authentic buildings. Buildings that you go to and you don't see any crack. Then you know that cement died. Cement paid the price. They used stones. They used rods. They laid concrete foundations. But when the flood came and the waters began to recede, some buildings naturally were dropping. Gah. They were just dropping. In fact, one of the bridges, I think the bridge of Lagos Bridge, the one that they did most recently collapsed. Abi, That means they did fake job. So almost as if now, the roads that were constructed long ago are stronger. They have weight. They have capacity than the ones we do now. And that just, that's the scenario of life. When the storms of life come, notice that I said when, I didn't say if, it will come up and there's no end. You will graduate from one level to the other. And just in case you have not been taught before, you are hearing it from me today, it will come. Whether you are a pastor, a bishop, or an apostle, there is no respect for anybody. Challenges will come. Troubles will come. Count it all joy, my brethren, when you go, not if you go, when you go through trials. In another scripture, it says, think it not strange that a fairy trial has occurred to you. I think it's first Peter or so. So when we go through stuff in our life, seasons when it seems like God is silent, God is simply testing your weight. Are you lightweight? Any small thing, you become depressed. If by now, any small thing, you go and catch your pillow and cry yourself, you are a lightweight. You are a paper. In fact, you need emergency because at any time, the devil can come and squeeze you. A man of God was to go and preach in a crusade. And just before he left for the crusade, they called him and said, your, your, your family just had an accident and all your children are dead. You know what he did? Blessed be the name of God. Dusted his Bible and went for crusade. After crusade, we'll talk about who is dead or who is alive. That one, it, somebody will now say he has mind. No, it's not mind. That one is a spiritual heavyweight. It's not mind. There are some kind of trauma that even the mind of a man cannot hold. There are some things that you need spiritual strength. That's why the investment in prayer, that's why the investment in the world, all of these things is building you for a, a day of trouble. A day when it will be tested. You open a business that is worth 100 million and one day you come and fire destroys everything to the ground if after one week you are still the same person going up and down nothing happened then this one is a spiritual heavyweight somebody told me of somebody uh, you know a trader when the market caught fire that he had two shops and he had goods worth 2 billion billion. Oh. It's big money. Oh. Don't mind that many people are stealing it in this country now. No, they have st they've stolen money so much in Nigeria that when they say billion, it looks small. Do you know what billion is? You know what billion is? Even if you spend one million every day or every week, you'll not be able to ex exhaust, exhaust two billion. Right? Even if you spend one million every day, you can't exhaust two billion in a year. One million every day is 365 million. At most, 366. You didn't even reach half. Two billion. Got head down by fire. The story said he slumped and died. So you now see where his heart is. You now see that his security was around those things. And it is a tragedy to build your sense of security around things. Somebody will use money and buy gold, a young lady. Buy gold and hide it inside a box. And for her, that gold is her life. Ah, what do I pray for you? May God allow them to steal that gold. So that you will see that you didn't die after the gold was missing. No, the way we idolize, it just... So you see that we... Be, when we are exposed to crisis situations as believers, that's when you know those that are lightweight, those that are middleweight, bridge our weight, and heavyweight. 
The Bible says in Psalm 125 verse 1, those who trust in the Lord shall be like Mount Zion that cannot you will become a spiritual heavyweight. Let me give you five signs of an individual who is a spiritual heavyweight. If you see any of these five consistently in the life of a believer is a spiritual heavyweight. Number one, one who lives in the consciousness of their identity and new life in Christ. One who lives in the consciousness of their identity and their new life in Christ. If you find a man that lives continually in the consciousness. Do you know what it means to live? Consciousness is the highest level of knowledge. Are you hearing what I'm saying? In the natural, consciousness is the highest. You, it means you have accepted it to become your reality. Awareness is different from consciousness. When you just read something randomly, you are aware of it. You just keep yourself abreast with the facts. But when you become conscious of something, even if they tear that book and throw it away, it's already written in your mind. It's written in your heart. You know there's a difference between knowing of head and knowing of heart. Huh? Knowing of head, you can forget. That's cramming. Knowing of heart, it is inside you. Just like national anthem. You learned it when you were in primary school. 20 years over that you are done with school, you can still stand without thinking. You can recite it. You have transferred the knowledge from your brain to your mind, your heart. It's now part of you. It's now, it's now, it's now an existence in you. It's a life force inside of you. That's why you must be careful what you are conscious of. Some people watch Netflix until they become conscious of that thing. And if you see somebody that, if a life, if you want to know a life of a person that watches film a lot, you will see the way they behave. Anytime there's an alarm, they will react the way they react in the film. Is that true? In fact, even their dreams now, film, 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 did they see? Because they have become conscious of it. Now, you know, most times these films just try to portray things that happen or that may happen in society. At other times, some of these films are fictions. They are not real. So imagine when somebody gives himself to watching film to a point where he becomes conscious. What he has done is he has introduced himself to a pattern of life that is not real. Believe me, in Nigerian film, see the kind of cars the actors are driving. Cars that you know in the natural, even, even with 10 years of their career, they can't buy that car. You're not telling me that it's real. Every actor in Nigerian film has car. Come into real life first. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Am I boring? So one who lives in the consciousness of their identity. What does it mean to live in the consciousness of their identity? <laughs> Let me explain it just before you think you know. If I ask you a question now, who are you? Many of you will tell me what you think you are. But listen, it is not what you think you are that you are. It is what you think that you are. If I ask you who are you, you will now start telling me what you think you are, isn't it? But that's not what you are. You are doing that one because I asked you a question. It is when I follow you on a daily, a daily basis who you are when nobody is inspecting you or, or, or invigilating you or checking around you. Your thought pattern, how you live your life, how you see life, that is who you really are. There are some people that perpetually see failure in life. In fact, anytime they are presented with options, chances are that they have 70%. They are 70% sure that they will fail. There are some people that can't help but always register negativity over anything in their life. That's who they are. 
There are some people who never believe they'll be rich one day. How do I know? That's why they're always begging for money. It's not what you think you are that you are. It's what you think. So if I ask you, who are you? What identity you do you have? What will you say about yourself? Many times we'll give the identity of who we are in the natural. But in Christ Jesus, the Bible says, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. A new creature means a new identity. Question, do you know that identity? Do you understand what it is? I'm not talking about new creation realities. So no, I'm talking about your identity in Christ. That kind of identity comes in response to a revelation that you have of God. Over time, as you fellowship with God, as you transact with God, as you come to know God, what is happening in essence is that you are coming to know yourself. And so it's the God that you know that defines your identity. In other words, every dimension of God that is revealed to you is what is your identity. And then knowing it is one thing, then living in the consciousness of it. When I wrote that I am confession, eh, it was not, I didn't forge it. I didn't copy it from somewhere. It came as an inspiration born out of consistent consciousness of who I've seen myself to be from the pages of the word of God. That's why I called it I am. And now, because of what I am, have, I have written, many people have been blessed, many people have been delivered, many people have had a renewal of their mind. Many people now understand their identity. Why? Because one man saw himself in God and lived in the consciousness of it till it compelled others to become like him. When you are conscious of who you are in Christ, it, that, that is that nature, that image, it will compel people around you. It will compel things to conform to it because there's an energy that flows with it. Living in the consciousness of who you are. And it doesn't break regardless of the situation you go through. Regardless of the circumstance you go through. A man that is conscious of who he, who he is in Christ remains the same in all situations. Unmovable. You see those kind of people, they are faced with so much challenges and crisis and they maintain their stays. And you say, oh, this one, get mine, no, there's nothing like that. Let's, let's, let's tell ourselves the truth. All of those, we, some of us hide around those nonsense and just try to, simply because or everybody is not like you. you. You want to give yourself to inferiority. You want to give yourself to discouragement. You want to be pampered continually. And then all of a sudden, you see sets of people around you that refuse to become like you. You see, Thor, now I get my no. That's cowardice. It's not about getting money. It's about knowing who you are. The night the flood came, do you know I slept? I only woke up because they, they came and knocked my door that there's flood. I say flood, okay? I went outside to the gate. Everything was fine. In fact, your cars are was parked outside. I looked at everything. She, a wise man, in quote, she run and push the car and pack it inside. I looked at it and I said, there's an invisible line of the blood around the street. I went back and slept till morning. How you know I slept? Many people called me. I didn't pick. I woke up in the morning. You don't understand. When I was coming to Meduguri, God told me that as long as you follow my will for you and go to Meduguri, nothing can take your life until you leave. Do you understand what I'm saying? Even if there's a thought flood, don't, no need to bother about myself. Bother about other people. I will always be fine. I'm not just telling you this is my life for the past 10 years. There's a consciousness I've come into. If I was not that conscious, you will not be here. Colossians 3 verse 1 to 4. Living in the consciousness of your identity and your new life in Christ. If then you were raised with Christ, seek those things which are above. Where Christ is, sitting at the right hand of God. Let's go on. It says, set, set your mind on things above, 
not on things on the earth. Okay, let's mention all the things on the earth. Mention for me. Cars, houses, jobs. Continue now, don't pretend. Business, family, marriage, relationship, food. Mention it. The Bible says, do not set your minds on those things. It doesn't mean that you should, not, you should do without them, no. But it says, don't, don't make them your obsession. Do you know what it means to set your mind? One of the powers of a man is focus. There are seven things God gave man. Let me give you two amongst those seven. I mean man, not a, not a believer. I mean man. There are seven things God gave man. Let me give you two out of the seven. Number one, God gave man a will. That man has the ability to choose. And through the power of choice, man can define his existence. With or without the help of God. So with or without the help of God, a man can by, a, by the power of choice decide that I will never be poor. And whether he does it the right way or he does it the wrong way, he can by that decision arrive in riches. God gave man, not a believer. Man. Why many people are lazy is their choice to be lazy. Why many people live waiting for aid, waiting to be helped is because they have decided that unless they are helped, they will never go anywhere. It's a power of choice. Another thing God gave man is the ability to focus. Let me tell you, and these are things that the devil cannot steal from you. Your ability to remain focused on one cause is something, is a gift from God that the devil cannot steal. The devil knows that he's afraid of a man that is focused. The Paul said this one thing I do, forgetting those things that are behind. I press towards the mark. Focus. Many people cannot do great things for God because they are not focused. They run around, can advance with people. They look at what people are doing. And then you are just living according to people's opinion. But maybe because you are not very conscious, you are not convicted that the path that you are walking on was ordained by God. Because if you are, you remain focused. Focus. The Bible says, set your mind on things above. So there are things above, things that are beyond the natural. How many times do you think about those things? I know what you were thinking about before you came here, food. Do you know one thing with this life? The way God designed life for man is that as man pursues God, things will pursue man. But if man leaves God and pursues things, God, who is the giver of all things, will withdraw from man. So where is the man going? He's going to a dead end. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things. The, the Bible does not say every good and perfect gift comes from the father of light. So who do you seek? Is it the gift or the giver? If you were to meet a multi-billionaire and he gives you three options. Option one, an exotic car. Let's say a Mercedes Brabus or a Mercedes Maybach. Okay, some of us don't know. It's Toyota we know. Toyota Corolla. Corolla L-E. Corolla L-E. Corolla C-E. Corolla S. Ah! That's why your brain is Corolla. Corolla, Corolla, Corolla. -in. And it's okay to drive the Corolla, but don't end there. Amen? Uh -huh. And stop preaching to me and telling me, ah, this world is carnal. Ah, is it not just to drive carnal lie? There are some kind of cars that when you sit down inside, the, the chair will massage you. That stress, so, oh, you don't understand what money can do. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Imagine if I had a private jet, I would have arrived since morning. Rested and come for meeting, but now I have to queue up. That's even what people think is big man -o. There are some people that they've never seen it in their dream that they will, they will fly on a plane. They've never dreamt it. Meanwhile, those that are flying are now seeing the need for even a private jet. You can trek to the airport by 7 p.m. with a suitcase, just one suitcase. You don't buy. Ah, you know, saying a poor man, they pack many load when they, they travel. With all due respect. 
Because they can't afford many things. They have to carry their cosmetic, carry this one, carry that. But a rich man just go with his card and his phone and his tablet. When I get there, I can shop everything. You can enter anywhere, buy and leave. If you enter today's store, now make, make sure you are, I'm, I'm still on point one. If you enter today's store, if you look, if you see people that when they're going around the shelves, they will look like this before they pick. It's not the product they're looking at, it's the price. Because they're calculating what is there. But you see somebody, he already knows what he wants. He just enters, carries the basket. Picks, 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 picks reaches there. They say, how are you paying? By card or by cash? He said, by card. Huh? So don't, don't, don't die with Corolla. Amen? Becoming rich is not the ideal thing for following God, but it's one of the derivatives. If you follow God and walk by his wisdom, you cannot end up poor. But riches and poverty is not the ideal thing for salvation. Do you have the balance now? Uh -huh. Knowing God is ultimate. However, there is no way you truly know God that you will live in lack. The Bible says God is able to make all grace abound towards you. So the Bible says, set your minds on things above, not on things on the earth. When it talks about things above, it's talking about the things of the spirit. Visions, knowledge, spiritual knowledge, revelations, power, grace, truth, encounters, the anointing. These are deeper things. Things that money cannot buy. Let's, let's read to the end. He said, for you were dead. Verse 3 now. For you died and your life is hidden with Christ in God. When Christ who is our life appears, then you will also appear with him in glory. So, signs of a spiritual heavyweight. Number one, one who lives in the consciousness of their identity and their new life in Christ. Your life in Christ is the most qualitative life ever. There is no dream that can be compared to it. Ephesians chapter 2 from verse 4 to 7 gives us a template about what God did for us. This new life that we enjoy. He said, but God who is rich in mercy because of his great love with which he loved us. Let's go on. Even when we were dead in trespasses, made us alive together with Christ. By grace you have been saved. And raised us up together and made us sit together in the heavenly places. Look at this. While we were dead in sin, he made us alive. Then he raised us up. New life, new position. To sit together with him in heavenly places. And these heavenly places are far above principalities and powers. Why are we seated in heavenly places? Verse 7 and the last. It says that in the ages to come, he might show the exceeding riches of his grace in his kindness towards us in Christ Jesus. So the life of Christ that is in you is meant to showcase the volumes of the grace of God. Why did God send his son to die? Why did he initiate the plan of redemption? It's because there's something he wants to manifest through your life. Something greater that the Bible says even in the ages to come. It's something that they will see and wonder at. We are talking about your life in Christ Jesus. Being conscious of that life and the identity that comes with it. It's called eternal life. The life of God, the Zoe life. The life that is without end. The life that defies and has dominion over death. The life that, it, that brings you into the God class. That's why it says ye are gods and children of the most high. Do you know what it means to be called a God? Have you ever thought about it for one day? Most times we are just thinking about all our insufficiencies in the natural. And you see, the reason for salvation is so that you can look be, uh, beyond your insufficiency in the natural and look to Christ as your all sufficiency. The Bible says in 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 5 to 6, it says not that we are sufficient in ourselves, he said, but our sufficiency is of God 
from the moment you gave your heart to the Lord and you received the life of Christ, there is nothing in the natural that is sufficient to sponsor your new life in Christ. Everything now is a derivative of your life that comes from Christ. And that life is qualitative. It remains the same regardless of the situation. Listen, a prince is a prince whether he's broke or not. If you, read, if you meet a rich man that is stranded, there is a way they behave. All right? Some of them, out of humility, may thank you so much for helping them. But they will not make it look as if they were about to die before you came. No. Because they knew that if they were not in that position, they knew they could afford anything. For instance, you go to buy something somewhere, and a rich man comes there, and he doesn't have cash enough to pay. Doesn't mean he doesn't have money enough. He just doesn't have cash enough. He can boldly even walk up to you and tell you to borrow and then ask you for your account. So though he's insufficient in paper, cash, but he's sufficient in financial resources. So that's how you look at yourself. That though in the natural, I am insufficient. Yes, I don't have money. Yes, I don't have a very good business. Yes, I don't have this or that. But stop building your reputation around those natural things. Start seeing who you are. How rich you are in the spirit. Let your value come from how much knowledge of the life of Christ that you have in you. And you walk around with every sense of dignity. Knowing that you are who you are. That you have something money cannot buy. That is one of the signs of being a spiritual heavyweight. When you live with this consciousness. Those kind of people are fearless people. They may be humble and gentle, but they are not cowards. They don't struggle with inferiority complex. They don't try to com com compete with people. You see, a man that knows he is different, doesn't, he doesn't compete with others. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Uh -huh. Many times I watch Usain Bolt. He doesn't run again now. But those his race. Sometimes he starts the race mocking the people. There's a way he runs, he'll be mocking them. He already knows he will win. He knows he's the fastest man alive. And he lives in the consciousness of that. So he doesn't, he doesn't mind who is there. He's already thinking of how he celebrates his, his victory. And then regardless of how the race starts, before you know, you see, and he has a way of giving them long gap, eh? Then when he gets to the finish line, he will run and do like this. Ha! That guy has lived in the consciousness that he is Usain Bolt. And until he retires, there's no one as fast as him. Now, do you live like that, conscious that you are a son of God? There is no other person that bears that title. No other spirit, not even angels, bears the title of son of God. Jesus told them, he said, all power and authority in heaven and earth has been given to me. Now me, I'm going and I'm giving it to you. And the Bible says, as he is, so are we in this world. So he is king of kings and lord of lords. He is enthroned as Lord and Christ in heaven. Just like he is above in the spiritual, he has left me to be above in the natural. So you live with a sense of control and you are in charge. You are in charge of the weather. You are in charge of the economy. You are in charge of the crisis around your life. You are more than a conqueror. You know that you know that you know that you know and there is nothing the devil throws at you that can break it. That's the kind of man the devil will leave. Because there's no, there's no need wasting time attacking such a man. You can't change him. Can I go on? Romans chapter 6 verse 4 to 11. I'm just on point one. Oh. He said, therefore, we're still talking about the consciousness of your identity and your life in Christ. Look at this. He said, therefore, we were buried with him through baptism unto death. That just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in the newness of life. You know, Jesus did not resurrect himself. It was the glory of God, the Spirit of God that raised him. Now, the Bible says this is how you live your Christian life. Just the way it was the Spirit of God that raised Jesus. He did not raise himself. That's how you will have to depend on the spirit, the supply of the spirit to walk in dominion, to walk in victory over life. 
when you know that everything you will enjoy in the kingdom is a derivative of your union with God, you will not struggle. The Bible says it's in vain to wake up early in the morning and sleep late and still eat the bread of sorrow because the guy is hustling from morning till night. All that is in his mind is if I don't walk, my family will starve. But the Bible says he giveth his beloved sleep. Am I teaching laziness? No. But I'm just teaching you that you don't walk to survive. No. Your walk is the geography that manifests your Christ-giving potentials. You, po you, you possess the wisdom, the intelligence, and the power of the Spirit of God. So when you walk, people see displayed as you do business. Every other business will fail, but your own will prosper. And even when your own fails, there is a maintenance of peace around your life till you bounce back and succeed. If hard work was what blessed people, stone breakers should have been the richest. Firewood cutters should have been the richest. Wheelbarrow pushers. I saw somebody, a politician, wanted to empower, in this Nigeria, wanted to empower the people of his constituents. He bought wheelbarrow and gave them. Is that one empowerment? You see the slave mentality. He said that they used to borrow, they used to rent the wheelbarrow 200 naira a day. How much do they make? So now they don't need to rent, so they can. So you, that <laughs> and Nigerians now like palliative. We like palliative. Anything that happens, maybe they share rice for us. That's a beggarly mindset. You never think that you two one day should share for others. It's a, it's, it's, a, it's a demonic enslavement of a nation, of a generation. Who told you that all that is to you is palliative? When I started ministry, I made a vow. I said, I will never beg, I will never borrow. And I will never live at the mercy of any man. If God will not provide for me, I will maintain hunger with dignity. And yes, I have lived like that till today. Till tomorrow, pass Mike around this place. Nobody anywhere will stand up and say, me, I beg them for money for myself. Nobody. Where am I? Meduguri, like you. We just finished the program in Abuja. You don't want to know how many millions we spent for that one program. Without calling anybody, without texting anybody, without, we didn't even raise any money here, not even in the workers' level. It's not because we have. It starts from a mindset that you sustain. Let's finish the reading of Romans. If I stop here, it's enough. Because this identity crisis thing is a major problem in the body of Christ. And I feel that the God has commissioned me in recent times to address it. Let's go on to verse 5. For if we have been united together in the likeness of his death, certainly we also shall be in the likeness of his resurrection. Knowing this, that our old man was crucified with him, that the body of sin might be done away with, that we should no longer be slaves of sin. For he who has died has been freed from sin. You know why many people still go back to commit the same sin? It's because they still have a mentality that they are slaves of sin. When somebody looks at immorality, for instance, and he's afraid that he will fall. He's afraid because he's a prisoner of that sin. Fear makes you a prisoner. But the Bible says just, the, just like Jesus died on the cross and by his death he did away with sin. So also, we to our, our, the nature of sin in us was nailed to the cross with him. So that he who has died is no longer under sin. This scripture gives you the victory to walk over sin. So you travel to a place as a government worker. They bring ladies around you. And it's as if you are a log of wood. Why? Because you have consciousness of this knowledge. That he who has died has been freed from sin. That when Jesus died, I died with him. And as a result, sin was dealt with. And so now that I'm a believer, I have dominion over sin. Read the rest when you get home. Are you blessed at all? If I can tear my heart and just put, put it in you the way God put it in me. Number two. Signs of a spiritual heavyweight. 
One who walks by faith. Aha. Alabashi katabalekuma. Can I tell you what faith is? <laughs> faith is, give me this basket. Just give me this basket. Let me show you something. Thank you. You know that if I drop this basket, it will fall, isn't it? But faith is, let me just give you an example. Faith is, yes, I know that there is a reason why this basket should fall when I drop it in the air. But I know something else that should stop it from falling on the ground. And then, even if it drops on the ground, come and catch it, please. Even if it drops on the ground, I'll pick it again. Now, so long as I still believe Regardless of the negativity of the result, I still believe that this thing can suspend in the air. That is faith. So faith is holding on to your conviction regardless of the outcome of the result. So it's not even about producing result first. It's about the buoyancy of your conviction. So sit down there and allow sickness to deal with your body. That's because you believe that I was born a sickler. All my life I will struggle a sickler. Be it unto you according to your faith. But someone sees in the scripture that he was wounded for my transgressions. He was bruised for my iniquities. The chastisement of my peace was upon him. And by his stripes I am healed. Even if you inject him tomorrow, he still maintains that confession. By his stripes, I am healed. You see, it's not about the injection. It's not about what's happening in natural. I, the, this is a solidified conviction in my spirit. There's nothing you can do to change it. That's what it means to walk by faith. So, they give you 100,000 to start a business. You start and the thing crash and you lost everything. If you are willing to start 10 times again, even when you fail, you have faith. You have faith that you are an entrepreneur. If you find that person, invest in them. Ask great businessmen. They've one, <laughs> I was listening to one of the renowned entrepreneurs in Africa. How many of you will know in Vusi, Vusi Tembekwayo? South Africa. You, you, you are just looking at me. That's why your puff puff has not grown. You can't even pay tight from that puff puff and, and zobo you are selling. You don't even build mental capacity. Allow me to flog you small. They asked him in an interview, so what have you learned from you? He said that he's sure. This is a world-renowned speaker, a life coach, and a, an entrepreneur. He said he has failed more than he has succeeded. Go and read the history of Dangote Refinery. Imagine losing a hundred million dollars. Not Naira, dollars. You lose it on a project and you go back and re-strategize to sink money in that project. Are you a fool? Indeed. Because men of faith look like fools to foolish people. You walk by faith. You decide that your life will be nothing short of what the world says. Many of you come from families, listen, and you are going to be the Joseph of your family. But you have to wake up one day and look at your family members and say, I love all of you, but you see this poverty mindset, I'm done with it. I'm not going to keep begging like you people. Me, if it's rather I die trying to break forth than remain here with you. When you, when you, when you, when you face life like that, that's when you start headed, you are, you are headed for riches. Me, I don't know how to carry my phone and text somebody and say, oh, I'm broke. It's, it's an insult to me, first of all. Instead of texting, I would rather pray. The Father of Spirit, he will talk to whoever must help me at that time. For we walk by faith. The Bible says, 2 Corinthians 5 verse 7. We walk by faith, not by sight. Galatians 2.20 said, I've been crucified with Christ. He said, yet not I that live, but Christ that lives in me. 
and the life which I now live, I live by the faith of the Son of God. I live not. <laughs> it means that the moment I became born again, I died. I ceased to be Jonathan. There were people who used to know me before now. Some know me as Jonah. Some know me as Joe. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Yeah, but when I knew Christ and contacted the Holy Ghost, Joe has died. Jonah has died. This is now a new man in Christ. The life that I now live, I live by the faith of the Son of God. So those people that knew me as Joe 20 years ago will watch me on YouTube. They see thousands of views and say, when? Is it the same Jonathan we know? That used to peep from children's class, peep adults church. Now they are the ones peeping me online. You walk by faith. You walk with a different mentality. You, you see, people of faith, eh? If you are not careful, you will consider them to be arrogant. Yesterday, we celebrated Bishop David Oyelbo's birthday. You see, I like that man. Oh. I just, I may not subscribe to everything he does, but I love that father of faith. I love him so much. I love him for one thing. He's don't get focused. And I like that it is on the world. As long as God has said it, he stays with it. And that's why today Nigeria can boast. At least if we cannot boast of anything as a country, we can boast of a prosperous church. At least. We may not have good roads like Dubai. We may not have technology like China. We may not have automobiles like, like, like Japan or, or Germany. We may not have a robust economy like America. But when it comes to spirituality, they're a the farmer for Nigeria. Whether you like it or not. And it's because of men like that, the price that they pay to stand by God's word. If you want to be a spiritual heavyweight, you must be a man of faith. Too. And your faith will be tested. Let me not lie to you, it will be tested. But will you maintain your confession in the midst of the test? I declare that you will in Jesus' name. Number three, one who embraces prayer as a lifestyle. One who embraces prayer as a lifestyle. Spiritual heavyweight. For him, prayer is not just an activity to feel righteous. Prayer is not just a habit. Prayer is a lifestyle. It's an addiction to pray. You like to pray. Are you hearing what I'm saying? When you have grown to the point where you love prayer more than food or more than sleep. Uh -huh. Prayer. And can I tell you something? Prayer is one of the signs of humility. Because you pray to show that you depend on God. So a spiritual heavyweight is one that has made and built a lifestyle out of prayer. He has prayer times. He has prayer places. He has prayer locations. He has prayer seasons. His, his life is, is constructed around it. Those kind of people will be sensitive to the things of the spirit again and again. When prayer is a lifestyle, it is difficult to get swallowed up in the flesh. Are you hearing what I'm saying? We finished the, 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 the conference on Monday, sir. I went back home. Do you know I didn't sleep till 2, 2 30 a.m.? As tired as I was. I just remained in the parlor. Bro, victory was, they came and met me. You people, I was in that parlor till 2. Is it that the body was not tired? It was tired. But you see, just like no matter how tired you are, when you see Netflix, your body will arrange. Yes or no? Uh -huh. That's you. Your body will arrange for Netflix. That's how when prayer becomes a lifestyle, when no matter how tired you are, a call to prayer lightens up your mood. That's how you become a heavyweight because prayer is a spiritual exercise. You are exercising your spirit. It's like going to the gym every day, lifting those metals. After six months, come and check the guy. You say God is not answering your prayer now. Don't worry, just keep praying. God does not want you to build a prayer point. He wants you to create a prayer life. You will build your prayer life to a point where there is so much energy around your life 
that certain points don't need to be answered by God. The energy you generate answers them. It looks strange to somebody that wants to have nothing to do with prayer. Number four, one whose spiritual senses are exercised unto mastery. One whose spiritual senses are exercised unto mastery. Hmm. Hebrews chapter 6 verse 14. When your spiritual senses have been exercised, have been stretched, have been tuned. Hebrews chapter 6 verse 14. Is it 6 14? Is this 6 14? Okay, 5 verse 14. Sorry. 5 verse 14. He said, but solid food. Somebody shout solid food. Shout it again. Solid food. Uh huh. Solid food belongs to those. Another translation says strong meat. To those who are full of age. That is those who by reason of. Now this is how the Bible describes an old, an old man in Christ. Not by physical age. But by those who by reason of use have exercised their senses to discern good and evil. That means as far as God is concerned, you are old, not according to your age, but how sharp your spiritual senses are. It's a taboo to be 65 as a Christian and you are dull spiritually. You are dull. Witches are parambulating around your family. You sleep. You can't even see a dream after sleeping for eight hours. You can't even see a small vision or a dream. Your senses are dull. You can't meet a fraud star pretending to be a new friend and you pick that there's something wrong with this guy. One of my daughters told me about somebody. He said, Daddy, he has checked all the boxes but there's something in my heart that does not agree. I said, that is it. I said, that is it. Forget those boxes. Throw those boxes into the river Ninja. That is it. You know, some guys, some brothers, when they want a fine and a humble girl, a church girl, they will come and pretend. Emotional black veil. When you tell them, I'm leaving you, I'm leaving you, they will say, why are you leaving me? Now you know you are the one that is making me close to God. Hey! I lie. Run. Say, no, because of you, I'm going to church now. Then they will now foolishly come to the pastor and say, and ever since I started dating him, he started coming to church. Now, now you see, now devil be that too. Now devil, the twin brother of devil, he's warming up. When he gets married, he will remove that suit and you'll see his wings. Eh? Listen, let me tell you. You see, anything, ah, when it comes to spirituality, young ladies, if you don't meet the man actively spiritual, don't marry him until he becomes spiritual. If that is what you want to if you can manage a half unbeliever, no problem. No problem. Go in peace and serve yourself, not the Lord. But if you want a spiritual man, if you don't meet him loving God, don't think that. Oh. You see, let me tell you something. The man must know how to exercise his own will. He knows what is right for him. It's because I started dating in that side behind me. They need to pour water on your head. You have high malaria, two plus. Exercise your spiritual senses. Shapokoto Lubahadai. Eyes that can see, ears that can hear, heart that can know things that are not taught. They can just meet somebody and know. Honey, I don't know, but there's something about this guy. I sense he has a role to play in our destiny. Don't just look at me as if you are looking at the cartoon. Factor it into your life. Many people are dying like chickens because they don't discern. No, you ask yourself. Many anointed, God-fearing believers that just die casually. You think God wanted them to end like that? Most times before, most times before that accident or before that issue that brought their demise or before they were cheated and robbed, there was something, they, they, they ignored the spiritual sense that kept telling them, this thing is of no good. 
The Bible says those who by reason of use have exercised their senses. The Bible calls them spiritual heavyweight. It says solid food, strong meat belongs to those ones. They can crack hard things. You don't know the kind of things I face as a pastor. People bring all kinds of... A lady, a Muslim, traveled from Abuja. Came and met me after our worker service. After visiting Malams, and asked me a question. I hope you know at that time you need to hear from heaven per second per second. You check the weather uh, 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 forecast for that day. They say rain. And your flight is by 11. And then you turn the phone and speak to the sky and say, when I leave, let the rains fall. And it happens like that. Here is a car with fuel to take you around and a driver. You are even dressed up to go out. But just before you get to the door, you just know that I'm not supposed to go out. And you turn back. I bought mission. Maybe it's your corpse that they want to carry there. An accident that was planned. Spiritual sensitivity. Maturity is not by age in the kingdom. It's by spiritual senses. If you are 60 and your senses are matured, wonderful. If you are 35 and your senses are like a 100 year old person. Matured senses. That's how many people marry, marry devils. They call husbands. Many people marry Jezebels. After speaking in tongues for how many weeks and years... They still as if they are blinded. Marry the wrong person. And you wonder, did you not see at all? The Bible says, Have, having eyes but can't see. Having ears but can't hear. Many people will be saved all kinds of traumatic situations. If only they were sensitive. But when you are lightweight, when you are not heavyweight in the spirit. When you don't have stamina and strength and stature. There are things you can't see. Your eyes will see from today. I say your eyes will see from today. Your senses will be open from today. Then finally, ah, I wish I had time to read 1 Corinthians 12, chapter 2, verse 12 to 16. You know, there's a teaching I want to do, but it looks like that's enough for a whole conference. The things of the Spirit. These are the kind of things you need to hear. Not all this uh, soap and water. And... Do you know how angry I am with those things? I've just been disciplining myself not to talk. Soap and water and oil and candle. The latest one I saw is, 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 is apron. Oh, flower. Can you imagine deception? It's apron. It's an apron like a cheetah, so you can run like a cheetah. You have the speed of a cheetah. And I think my problem is with the, 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 the naive believer that will go and buy that apron. And sometimes there are believers with PhD. PhD in Newcastle, England. And one in the University of South Wales. And foolish people like that with their PhD. We'll go and buy a mantle that you will receive. Are you, are you a fool? So God is not speaking anything from the word of God again. Now what God is speaking is to tell somebody to go to the zoo and look at a cheetah and sew apron like a cheetah. And so Bible don't finish now. Now that nonsense will they do? So is the believers that swallow it that just like, as they see like feather weight believers that are being deceived. May you not be deceived in this age. You may not like what I'm saying but there's a spirit in the age. When I see what people fall for, somebody calls you one day and gives you a prophecy. And from that day, you don't know peace any longer. Ah. Finally, before we pray, signs of a spiritual heavyweight, one who exerts dominion over the flesh. One who exerts dominion over the flesh. 
There's a scripture in Proverbs that says, He that hath control over his spirit is stronger than he that taketh a city. The first and the foremost place where you must exercise dominion over is your flesh and yourself. When you feel like going out, but you know you are not supposed to go out, and with all that is available, you sit down and you don't go. As little as that action, you have exercised dominion over your flesh. Your flesh is the nature of sin that is in your body. It wants to rule over you. It wants to suppress you. It wants you to do what it wants. So young lady, the guy said, let's go for lunch. And that time for lunch, the Holy Spirit said, wait upon me for 25 minutes. Say, no. I'm going for lunch at City Star. It's your flesh that is ruling over you. Your flesh. Forget that your name is Christiana or Christ, Christian or, or Christus or Chrysanthus or Christos. Even if you name yourself Christos. Now they even name people anointed. You know me by that one, no? If you have rule over your body, your body. Paul said, let's, let's see what Paul said. 1 Corinthians 9, 25, 27 and then we'll pray. 1 Corinthians 9, 25, 27. Quickly, please. And everyone who competes for the prize is temperate in all things. Now they do it to obtain a perishable crown. But we, for an imperishable crown. Verse 27. Paul now says, but I discipline my body. Somebody shout discipline. But I discipline my body and bring it into subjection. Lest when I have preached to others, I myself should become disqualified. So your body doesn't tell you to, what to do. You tell it what to do. Vanda kapakatuski tekeba. Flesh. Dominion. There are many people that can speak in tongues. They can even lay hand on the sick and they recover. But if a lady just touch them, they've already committed immorality in their heart. Just touch you. Just touch they will not know themselves for 24 hours. Ah. Lightweight. A heavyweight is not, man, is not somebody that necessarily exhibits gifts, but somebody that can bring the nature of the flesh. Sometimes the things your flesh wants may not even be bad, but it doesn't subscribe to the pattern of the spirit. So you have to enslave yourself to the spirit to dominate the flesh. A politician calls you, say, man of God, are you in town? Please come and, come and visit us. And you know that when you go there, you come out with envelope. But God says, don't go, I don't have a word. And you sit down in your house. Here yeah, is just 20 minutes drive. And you walk out with 5 million. But you sit down there. People come for counseling and you are praying for them and God says, that 50,000 on the table, take it and give them. And that's the only cash with you. Your flesh will, not, your flesh will give you the principles of self-preservation. That you need to be wise like Joseph. You need to keep this one because of the rainy day. You see, thank God for the manifestation of gifts. But I will first of all fear a man that has control over his flesh. A man that has mortified his flesh. That can control his tongue. There are many anointed people that God may never lift their voice. Their voices may never be heard because their tongue is evil. There are many pastors that would use their tongue to bless people and drive the people away. There are many young ladies that may never get married till they are both 30 and seek deliverance because of their mouth. It's not the demon that is worrying you. It's your flesh. You have not controlled it. And you want, to, you want to fight principalities and powers. You want to fight the witches in your family. You want to deal with generational cause when you have not dealt with yourself. Are you ready to pray? So when we begin to pray, some of you, God will begin to orchestrate something in you that will cause you to metamorphose into these realities. I've mentioned five things 
that are signs of a spiritual heavyweight. I didn't complete the sermon. I would have shown you four daily habits that you must practice to grow and become a spiritual heavyweight. Let me run it quickly. Number one, praying in the spirit. You must practice it every day. Praying in other tongues. You must pray in tongues to a point where when you open your mouth to pray, the natural thing that comes out is tongues. Listen, it's not a Pentecostal affair. It is the life of a believer. Don't allow the devil cheat you. Do you know the economy that is, that is, that is available to you by praying in the spirit alone? Praying in the spirit develops your spiritual senses. Praying in the spirit helps you activate faith in your life. Praying in the spirit supplies wisdom for direction. Praying in the spirit can preserve your life. Can, you can live a balanced life by just praying in tongues. Praying in the spirit can even take away sickness. I wish I have time to show you. Number one, praying in the spirit. Number two, meditation. Number three, holiness. Number four, waiting. Maybe one Sunday I'll come and teach on this. Four healthy habits to becoming a spiritual heavyweight. But tonight I said number one, signs of a spiritual heavyweight. One who lives in the consciousness of the identity in new and new life in Christ. Number two, one who walks by faith. Number three, one who embraces prayer as a lifestyle. Number four, one who sense spiritual senses are exercised unto mastery. Number five, one who exert dominion over their flesh. Can you stand so that we can pray for five minutes? Suba ni mahakai de mosikama. Vi katush tabanga harada. Just hold the hand of your neighbor. Just two, two. Not more than two. Just two, two. Hold the hand of your neighbor and let's pray in the spirit for five minutes. And pray out loud where you are. Pray out loud where you are. Suka lebe keto shupranta malahatema. Masaprata baragada bakes kapata balagadeba. Valakete bakosiaba. Sima la mahana. Inkoporoto kobosi kaprata. Seba rama mamba la ba 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 ba. If you are tired of an ordinary life, if you are tired of being a lightweight in the spirit, then this is the time to go hard. This is the time to exercise yourself. This is the time to grow large and be in the spirit. This is the time to become rich in the things of the spirit. This is the time of your life where you must walk in the consciousness of your God-given identity, of your God-given potential. Paul said, I put my body under subjection. Your body will not rule over you. Self will not have dominion over you. The flesh cannot reign over you. For you are not under the law, but under grace. Ha 
chapter 4 verse 32 just one prayer before we go this as we pray we are exercising ourselves I, I hope you know this is how God translates weak men to become mighty men next verse please verse 33 there's something I want you to cry to God to rest upon your life today you cannot remain weak you cannot remain small you cannot remain lightweight you can't keep running from demons. You can't keep repeating a pattern of sin. No, it's time to rise to a place of strength. It says, and with great power, somebody shout great power. Great power. Shout it like your destiny will hear you. Great power. The Bible says, the apostles gave witness to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus. Why? Because great grace was upon them all. Great grace. It's one thing to have grace. It's another thing to have great grace. The word great is the word mega. It means something that is super, something that is above. I want you to pray in the spirit in the next four minutes. Let that grace rest upon your life and transform you to become a supernatural woman. A supernatural man. Come and pray like your destiny depends on it. Refuse to be small. Refuse to be small. Rise to a place of greatness. To a place of strength. To a place of power. Become a spiritual heaven. Oh, 
Malakapanua sa, the first of his law, as a businessman, as a pastor, as a government official, become a heavyweight in the city. God is looking for mighty men. God is looking for men of stature. Men are ready to use until he makes them to rise. Sakapa <laughs> In Jesus mighty name. Please hear me tonight before we close. It was never in God's plan for you to remain a weak person. The purpose of salvation is so that you can become God's priceless asset. God has put the spirit of his son in us by whom we cry, Abba, Father. When God gave us the Holy Spirit, he gave us everything. God is looking for men that will yield until they rise. He causes them to rise in power and in grace. Men of stature. Listen to me, we are in the last days. This is the age of the kingdom. This is the dispensation of warfare. God wants mighty men and women that will be raised. That sin must not rule over you. Demons must not continually chase you. There's so much that God has put in your vessel. But you must sign up to become a spiritual heavyweight. Nobody develops muscles just by wishing. You have to go to the gym. You have to keep training and exercising until you grow to become what you desire. Let your desire for this qualitative and higher life push you to press into God. Don't pity yourself. Give yourself no sleep. Press into God like no man's business until you begin to touch power, until you begin to touch substance, until you begin to walk in dominion, until your life begins to look like what the scripture says. It is not left for men of God alone. No, no, no. Especially to Christians in the north. It's time for us to arise. God wants to raise you as an ambassador to represent his kingdom. You were created for his higher purposes. But tonight, God has provoked and challenged us to a higher place. Lift your hands and wave your hands and give him praise. Lord, lift me up and let me stand by faith on hell. Runes holy ground, a higher place that I have found. Lord plants my feet on higher ground. Lord lift me up and let me stand by faith on hell. Runes holy ground. A higher place that I have found. Lord, plant my feet on high. Please lift your hands. I pray for you from today. May the strength of the Lord rest upon you. The strength of the Lord that makes you walk with boldness. For God has not given us the spirit of timidity and fear, but of love, of 
power and of a sound mind. The strength of the Lord that makes you walk like a giant. The strength of the Lord that gives you dominion, total dominion over sin, over flesh, over self. The strength of the Lord that will make you do exploits for God. The strength of the Lord that makes you a limit breaker. May the strength of the Lord rest upon your life from today. Rest upon your life from today. Rest upon your life from today. No more weakness. You become a spiritual heavyweight. You will no longer be tossed to and fro. No. A man with control over your emotions. Over your mind. A man that lives in perfect peace. A man and a woman of faith. A man such as God can use for his glory. A man and a woman that becomes a terror to the kingdom of darkness. A constant pain to the devil and his agents. I said God will make you a constant pain to the devil and his agents. Finally, from today, everything that has blurred and crippled the image of your identity in Christ, I arrest it right now. And from today, you will walk with the consciousness of the new life that is in you. Out of that boldness, do exploits for the kingdom. Out of that boldness, walk in success day by day. Out of that boldness, walk in power and in grace. In the name of Jesus Christ. Clap your hands and give Jesus praise. Amen. Hallelujah. While you're standing, let's give an opportunity just in case there's anybody here who wants Jesus to be their Lord and their Savior. Wherever you are, I'd like you to walk to the front as quick as you can and I will pray for you. We'll do that in two minutes before we close. All standing. You can be a spiritual heavyweight if you are not in Christ. It is when you come into Christ that you become a new creature. You are here, you want Jesus to be your Lord and Savior. You want to stop struggling with sin. You want to have dominion and victory over sin. It starts by being born again. Or you want to rededicate or resurrender your life to Christ. Please walk to the front quickly. I'm going to pray for you. Or if you are following online, you'll make the confessions with us before we close. I'm giving 10 seconds for that. Walk to the front quickly so that I can pray for you. It's a new life that God is promising you. It's a new life. Keep clapping. They are coming. You made all things new. Yes, you made all things new. And I, I'm still waiting for that boy, that girl that must join this one. Sing it one more time. You make all things new. stretch your hands in front pray for this one if you need to join him join him quickly stretch your hands and pray for this one and you in front please put your right hand on your chest repeat this prayer after me and those who want to make Jesus their Lord and Savior they want to make a decision for Christ you are following by way of the internet or you are watching the rebroadcast of this service I want you to repeat this prayer after me. Say, Lord Jesus, I come to you today. I believe that you died for my sins and you were raised for my salvation. I receive your life and I declare that you are my Lord and my Savior now and forever. Amen. Father, thank you. You died for them that they will live for you. 
declare that their sins are forgiven by the authority of your word. They will grow to experience this new life. They will walk in victory and dominion over sin, over Satan, and over death. They serve you all the days of their lives. Jesus' mighty name. Amen and amen. God bless you for this decision. Just turn to your left and walk towards that lady waving her hands. Let's celebrate God for a soul that is one. Rejoice. Hallelujah. Amen. Can you spare me two minutes before you go? Thank you for your time and your patience. Just be seated for two minutes. Quick announcements before you go. You've waited this long, so just wait for two minutes before you go. Um, on Monday, the 16th of September, we had the Abuja Glory Summit. How many of you followed the service? Amen. And we send blessings of peace and grace to our Abuja family. Amen. And for you to know that that work has started, the next Glory Summit will be in February. Amen. Yes. Hallelujah. So, places like Abuja, Yola, and all of these other places will be seeing us often, especially from next year. Amen. Um, we have some more programs ahead uh, that will be announced so that you can be a part of it and that your life will be blessed. First of all, let me announce concerning Women's Conference, which is coming up very soon. Ah, that clap is too small. I think we can do better. Amen. Our Women of Valor Conference is on the 25th to 27th of October. Amen. Women, that's more than enough time to plan. Abi, I hope you will not drop from what you did last year. All right. And I hope you have saved money to buy your Ashwabi be this year. Some of you had to squeeze your husbands to, your, to buy. Amen. The young shall grow. So it's going to be an amazing time. All ladies, all females, married or single, three days of the wisdom and the power and the grace of God. Amen. I have another surprise for you, just like you, Tafli. Amen. So let's keep our fingers crossed. Amen. Eh, men's conference. Organize your thing and call me. Amen. Men, shout a who. Uh -huh. Organize your who. Amen. And then I want to also announce consigning, uh, excuse me, please. Um, warfare prayers for enlargement. How many of you are not aware of this prayer platform? Huh? Okay, everybody. Now, some of you, I bind the spirit of sleep. And I bind the spirit that will not allow you to follow what will bless you. If you are trusting God to experience enlargement, increase, expansion, or you feel that there are prophecies over your life, you want to ward them into manifestation. 14 days. Last seven days of September, first seven days of October, 14 days of non-stop prayer, 5 a.m. every morning. Just try it and your life will never be the same. The one for this month is starting when? On Tuesday. Tuesday. 24th. Tuesday. So Tuesday, 5 a.m., we're on Facebook and on YouTube. And your life will never be the same. We have people connecting from across the globe. From U.S., from Kenya, and so many places. Amen? So you, Meduguri people, what do I need to do? Should I knock your door by 5 a.m.? Amen. Don't feel too entitled, though. You are blessed in Jesus' name. Other announcements will come with time. And I also want to announce to us, because of the flood disaster that happened, our ministry in the little way that we can, we've tried to reach out to some amongst us that were affected one way or the other. Just some little food and relief items. We are also trusting God to also distribute um, hygiene materials like detergents, soaps, sanitary pads and all of that. Amen? So not just for those of us that were affected but stretch out to other people. 
What is happening in Meduguri, help needs to come from everywhere, okay? And you don't give because you have, all right? You give because you have the grace for giving. So, I just had an inspiration this week to do that. And I want to trust God to see how we can stretch to distribute at least 1,000 sanitary parts. Amen. Amen. Now, we are going to start work this week and say because now hygiene is going to be a major issue especially for those that are displaced. So it's going to be a lot of money. Those of you that are generously always contributing, may God bless you. And if you want to contribute, just send the amount to our usual access bank account, the account we use for Titan offerings. You can send your contributions there, uh, or you can meet the finance department or the public, the, the information desk. You can walk there after the service let them know how you want to give no matter how little or small let's reach out and show love to people amen and amen so what we are going to try to do that between now and first of october maybe we will do some on the first of october and we'll do some this month is that okay this is how great this is how ministries become great this is how you are blessed amen give and it shall be given to you good measure and running over shall rise up on your feet and let's close hallelujah thank you so much for your time please celebrate god for yourself thank you thank you and do you notice our new pulpit hey! amen oh, i thought i will impress you by bringing this one at least clap 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 at least yeah. amen Amen. All things are and all things have become speaking of new things uh, and see this one is Abuja Pupito. They collected it from them to give you. And you didn't give them anything for their program. Amen. Uh -huh. Somebody say we gave them you. Apostle we gave them you. Amen. Speaking of new things we are beginning to have fathers and mothers in our midst. So, amen. Time don't go now. You need to go. People following online, they are, they are at home. God bless everyone that has followed online. We love you. We'll see you next week by 3 p.m. Amen. So, some of us here, like our the head of our prayer department, God bless them with a bouncing baby girl. Amen. Pastor Prince will. God bless his family with. Is he a boy? A boy. Amen. And more are coming. Say amen. Hallelujah. You will testify very soon. And those of you that have relatives that are trusting God for children, carry your twins in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. This one thing I want you to do for me before we close. Now, I know last Sunday we didn't hold a physical service because of the flood. I wanted people to rest and just take care of themselves. Also, some of the road networks in town were blocked. But now everything is cleared. Abby? Good. So go back and tell your friends that we are back. And we are not going anywhere. Amen? Next week, come with at least two people. As a spiritual heavyweight, carry one, yeah. Carry the other one, yeah. I, God bless you. I love you. Surely, his goodness and mercy shall follow us. And we shall dwell in the house of the Lord. Greet one or two persons before you go. God bless you.